What's that? Surfside 6. An address? Surfside 6. Where is it? In Miami Beach. Surfside 6. Starring Troy Donahue. Surfside 6. Van Williams. Surfside 6. Lee Patterson. In Miami Beach. Co-starring Diane McBain. Margarita Sierra. Surfside Six. We're just getting started. Sure, honey. Relax. I'll have to be at work at night in the morning. Come on, get you up. You're not really taking her home. It's getting late. What's with you, buddy? You're going to disappoint the little lady. Take my car. Find yourself a cozy little bar, maybe. Romance there with some soft music and a couple of drinks. Usually works. Oh, I'd like to, but... Just ought to see it. It's more than I make in a month in the bank. Forget it. Nothing's too good for my old lieutenant. Uh, don't wait up for me. Huh? Seems as if everything's going smoothly. Right on schedule, Mr. Wiley. My pigeon about ready? Ready for the pot, you might say. Well, in this case, the jackpot, huh? A million dollar jackpot. Six. You're expected, Mr. Thorne. Well, Leon, when this rhino was about 200 yards away, I firmly planted my feet, and I took aim. Come in. I held my breath, sighted for the heart, and fired. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mr. Thorne, I'm not the captain. It's good of you to come. Well, that thing isn't loaded, is it, Mr. Ken? Oh, good heavens, no. I... Just explaining to Leon here how I bagged my first rhino. I guess I got a little bit carried away. Oh, Leon, Mr. David Thorne. Mr. Thorne, Thorne, Leon Huff. Mr. Huff is the security officer of my bank. How do you do? Would you join us in a little wine? Oh, just a little bit, thank you. I guess we'd better sit down, Mr. Thorne. Mr. Thorne, I'm going to get right down to cases as to why I asked you to come here. Oh, you know my bank, the Camden National? Yes, of course. One of the oldest banks in the state, and never been robbed. A great deal of that is due to Leon here. He's a real tiger when it comes to security. I do my best, sir. Right now, Leon's worried. When he's worried, I'm doubly so. You're expecting to be robbed? Yes, I am. Oh, the police know about this? There's not too much they can do about it. That's why I sent you. I don't get it. If you think you're going to be robbed, surely there's something the police can do. No, we have no proof. That's why, as far as the police are concerned, it's only supposition. What have you got, Mr. Camden? Well, Leon, maybe you'd better tell him your story. Twice during the past week, Mr. Thorne, I saw this fellow looking around the bank. He was a big man, wide across the middle, like me. 
Always wore a straw hat. Last time I saw him, oh, maybe 14 years ago, over at Palm Beach, I was working at the Guarantee Trust. One of the biggest robberies in the history of the state, Mr. Thorne. Nearly half a million dollars. And this man in the straw hat was behind that? I thought so, but the police weren't sure. This man was never caught, therefore I was never proven right or wrong. What made you think he was behind it in the first place? There was a teller at the Guarantee Trust, a bright young lad by the name of Tommy. Wasn't making much of a salary. Well, all around him, just like it is here in Miami, there were many things to turn a young boy's head. Well, this gang, they made friends with Tommy. Got him an expensive place to live, a, a fine sports car, saw that he had plenty of spending money. They even got him a girl. Yeah, I know the routine. They let him taste the high life, then they cut him off. Once the poor sucker's head is tasty, he'd do anything for more of the same. That's exactly right, Mr. Thorne. Tommy joined them in the robbery. He acted as their inside man. Was this Tommy arrested? No. They murdered him in cold blood during the holdup. I see. And you recognized one of the holdup men as being this man in the straw hat you've seen recently. They were wearing masks. I, uh, I'm sure that he was one of them. I'd seen him around town with Tommy. You understand, Mr. Thorne, now why it's only supposition. But if Leon says so, I'm perfectly willing to back his hunch. You seem to know a great deal about this Tommy, Mr. Hunt. Yes, I do. I also have a pretty good idea of how the gang got him to work as their inside man. That's right. Tell me, how come you know so much about him without being involved in it yourself? But I was involved, Mr. Thorne. Tommy was my son. <laughs> Take the case. What are you packing for? I'm moving. Across town. I can't take care of this place by myself. It's just temporary. Cyril Harris, bank teller. City Bank of Buffalo. What's your picture doing on here? Well, it's me for the next few weeks. Cyril Harris. What do you know about banking? Cameron gave me a cram course. Why the masquerade? Cameron seems to think his bank's being set up for a robbery. The gang was supposed to do it, always line up an inside man. And you're applying for that job, too? Yeah, if the gang hasn't chosen one already. Well, I'm still on the Fairchild case. If you need any help, let me know. Thanks, I like calling you later. Kind of sticking your neck out, aren't you? Oh, don't worry. I've been down to police headquarters all morning explaining to Lieutenant Snedeker what I'm up to. Smart move. You get in with the gang and the bank gets knocked over, you might have a hard time explaining you were just doing a job. You know it. Mm. Needless to say, we'll keep the fact I'm Cyril Harris quiet. I do contact the gang. We'll find out who we really am. Mm, I got the picture. Oh, hi, Ken. Dave, are you seeing someone off? Hmm? Me. Oh, but I need you for the party tonight. Oh, he won't be there. But you won't miss him. I'll be there. Where are you going? Oh, uh, uh Las Vegas. Wish him luck, Daddy. Do you think it's safe to let him go to Vegas by himself? Why not? Well, in Vegas, you've got to know how to hang on to your money. Oh, he'll hang on to it, and lots of other people's, too. Funny. <laughs> started right away I think for your first day maybe you'd better just sort of watch and observe oh Miss Merle oh. 
one of me, Mr. Camden? Uh, yes, Miss Merlot, this is Mr. Harris. He'll be replacing Tyler. Hello. How do you do? Putting you in charge of seeing that Harris learns all about how we operate here. You show him around and fill him in on our procedure. And uh, answer any questions you may ask. Yes, sir. Good luck, Harris. Thank you, sir. Well, if you follow me, Mr. Harris. Savings are all filed here. A to F, G to N, O to Z, in that order. See, then those must be the commercial files. That's right. Well, I can see you won't need much training, Mr. Harris. Oh, well, I, I don't know that much. By the way, my name's Cyril. All right. Mine's Kathy. So I have an idea. Why don't we go over to my window and you can watch me set up? Sounds fine. Cyril. Hello? Sorry, Chick, but I'm late. Say, who are you? The name's Cyril Harris. He's replacing Tyler. Cyril, this is Ted Briller, Camden National's own man about town. Now, careful, Kathy. You'll give Harris the wrong impression. What advice, Harris? Hangovers and banking just don't mix. I know, because I'm always trying it. Big night in the town, Briller? Shh. You know the Gascony room? At the Harper Hotel. Well, anyway, it really swings. I met a chick last night. I hate to break this up. Quite killer. By the way, I want you to meet the man who'll be working at the window next to yours. Hal Merlo, my brother. Hal, I'd like you to meet Cyril Harris. Mr. Merlo, welcome to the ranks, Harris. Thank you. Well, uh, we might as well get back to work. What is it, Kitty? Uh, I thought you might like to join me for a drink. Ooh, gotta run, Kitty. Big plans this PM. You know that chick I told you about? We're tearing into a couple of sirloins tonight. At the Gascony room? What else, Kitty? Kathy, you're just in time to save me. From what? Boredom, homesickness. You see, this is my first night in Big City. I'm sorry. You're not going to abandon me, are you? After being so kind to me today? Well, I am expected at home. Well, look, could I pick you up at 8 o'clock? We can have dinner. All right. It's 321 State Street. Make it 815. 815. Cyril, you're not serious about having dinner here. Why not? It's probably one of the most expensive places in town. Yeah, I see what you mean. I never gave you the idea about coming here. Well, the, the way Briller talked about it, it sounded like some sort of hangout. I better set you straight on Ted Briller right now. He talks big, but that's all it is, talk. You mean he was lying about coming here? He probably came here once for one drink at the bar. Oh, Ted's nice, but he's strictly a cheeseburger and drive-in movie man. I see. Well, look, we have an order, Jack. Do you want to go? Oh, no, no, I, uh... I have some money saved for my last job. What do you say we splurge tonight? All right, but on one condition, that you promise to have dinner with my mother and me at our place sometime. Promise. Sit down, sit down. Hi, Kathy. Found yourself a big spender. Well, I tried to warn him, but he wouldn't listen. Easy come, easy go. Say, listen, I'm sorry about missing dinner last time with you and Mom, but, well, you know how it is. I know how. Tell her that I miss her, and I'll be by to see her real soon. Will you try to make it soon, Hal? She misses you. Yeah. I'll see you. Right. Seems well on his way to being fried. Hal? Oh, he's just having a good time. Why the worried frown? Well, it's my fault, I guess. Tal spent most of his time and money looking after Mother and me. I'm the one who kept saying he ought to get a little fun out of life. And he took you up on it? Not right away. Then that man, Barney Michaels, showed up in town about two weeks ago. He's an old army buddy of Hal's. 
seems to have quite a bit of money. Anyway, he asked Hal to move in with him, and he did. I understand they have a beautiful apartment, lots of parties. Yeah, um, judging by the two young ladies, they seem to have done pretty well in that direction, too. I guess I shouldn't be so worried. It's just that he seems changed. Well, nice apartment, money, nice young ladies, who wouldn't change? What's up, baby? You're not leaving, are you? Let her go, Barney. You two were composing your own love songs. What happened? Make tracks. I want to hear, too. Grab a cab, I'll call you later. Okay, spill it. Laura just doesn't want to get tangled up with a square like me. Who's a square? You? Come off it. What am I, a nine to five white collar coolie? Barney, you've got a lot of money. More than I've seen outside the bank. Where'd you get it? What you really mean is, how'd I get it? All right, how? Was it gambling? Remember over in Japan, you used to do pretty good playing poker. Chicken feed. I gamble all right, but not with cards. With this. I only go for the big money. Well, I've got brains. So what do I have to do next? That depends on how bad you want it. So bad it hurts. Barney, whatever it is I want in, if you'll have me. Just to show, Laurie? No, that's only part of it. I like this apartment. I, I like the car you drive. I... I like having enough money to make waiters hop to. I get sick and tired of standing behind that counter all day saying, yes, ma'am, no, sir, holding all that money in my hand and knowing that none of it will ever be mine. All right. But if you're in, there's no getting out. Understood? Sure. <laughs> I want you to meet somebody. This is Hal Merlo, Mr. Wiley. He wants to be a partner. How do you do, sir? How do you do? So you want to join that little venture, eh? Yes, sir. Good. Now that you're in, let me repeat just one thing he said. There's no getting out. Close the door. You want to see me, Mr. Kendall? Yes, as far as they're concerned out there, this is about a bookkeeping era. But we want to know what progress you're making. It's been over a week now. Well, I think they've picked out their inside man. I'm pretty positive who it is. Who is it, Len? I'm sorry, I can't say that right now, Mr. Huff. There's a slight chance I might be wrong. But if I'm right, I want to spoil it. Well, uh, how could we possibly spoil it? Well, I'm sorry, I know you wouldn't intentionally, but a uh, suspicious glance, a look, might warn them. I want to talk to him first and see if he'll play ball with me. If he does, that'll solve all our problems. Do you, uh, you think he'll talk about it to you? I'm willing to bet, Mr. Huff, that if your son Tommy had had a chance to get out of the mess he was in, he would have jumped in. I've spent many a sleepless night thinking about the same thing. Well, that's what I'm hoping for with this man. You know, Harris, there's not too much time left. No, let's just pray there is. Anything else? No, that's all. Well, I better get back to work. What's come over you? The last few weeks you've been like a stranger. Forget about it. And forget about me. Look, I've got my own life to lead, and I'm going to lead it the way I want to. Can't, can't you tell? You find out anything? Well, no one seems to know much about this Barney Michaels. He'd been in town a few weeks back, loaded for bear. Throwing it around like this, what it was made for. Goes with a model named Shirley Dooley. Yeah, I know that. Has he got a police record? No, he's clean. I saw him out last night with your friend Merlo and Merlo's girl. Looked like they were having a good time. Did you happen to see him with anyone else? See a man about 45, straw hat, big around the middle? No, sorry, that's all there is. You want me to keep tailing Michaels? Yes, if you would. I've got to get back on the Fairchild case for too long. I can't spare much more time. 
Look, I, if you could follow Michaels just for tonight, I'd appreciate it. If anything comes up, I'll be here. Oh, I'm going out on a date, but I'll be back early. Uh, that's just like you. Fix business with pleasure. Just taking a page out of your book, Dad. I hope it's not my little black book. <laughs> But you know, Mother, she baked these cookies and insisted I drop some off for you. Uh, I guess I better call her and thank her. I think that's a real reason for baking them. Well, I've never seen where you live. Must have cost you a small fortune. Well, my buddy pays the rent. I just keep him company. I was wondering how you could afford it on what we slaves make. Look, uh, if you don't mind, I've got to meet some people. Well, I'm sorry if we're intruding. I'm sorry, Kathy. I... Didn't mean to make it sound that way. Well, lately, everything you say sounds that way. What's the matter, Hal? Are you in some kind of trouble you're not telling me about? To me? No. Everything's fine. Couldn't be better. You'll have to be more convincing than that. Remember when we were kids and you broke a neighbor's window? He didn't lie very well then, either. We're grown up now, and I don't go around breaking any more windows. The older one gets, the greater the things he breaks. What do you mean by that, Harris? Oh, I'm sorry, Hal. I know I'm a little out of line, but if you're in some sort of trouble, I'd like to try and help. There's always a way out, if there's someone you can trust. Why don't you try and trust us, Hal? You might find it's the answer. Harris, maybe I could talk to you alone, if you don't mind, Kathy. Oh, no, Hal, I wish you would. Hal? Oh, oh you got company. Well, you know Kathy, and this is Cheryl Harris, Barney Michaels. Well, uh, we have a dinner date. So, Hal, why don't you call me on that business deal? Shall we? Pardon me. Who was he? Oh, well, he's a friend of Kathy's who works down at the bank. They dropped off some cookies my mother made. Well, we better hurry. Mr. Wiley said the boom-boom room at nine. Look, uh, count me out tonight. I... I don't feel too well. That's too bad. Maybe all you need is a stiff drink. No, no I've, I've had a couple already. Well, what about the layout of the bank? Layout? I haven't had a chance to do it. Mr. Wiley's not going to be very happy with you, Hal. He was counting on that tonight. Well, tell him I'm sorry and that I'll do it tomorrow. Are you losing your nerve? No, not exactly. I, I don't mind drawing up the layout or finding out the time lock sequences Camden uses on the vaults. But the fireworks are bothering you? Well, old Mr. Hobbs a pretty nice fellow. After I let you guys in the bank, what if he starts something? You let us worry about him, okay? You just make sure we're at the right time when all the money's there. I, I'm going to hit the sack. Maybe I'll see you later. dancing us around. Claimed he wasn't feeling well and couldn't make it. I asked him about the layout. Did he have it? He said he hadn't done it. But he was snowing us. He had it hidden. Why would he lie? Well, something tells me he wants out. You're proving to be very untrustworthy. Mousy. Thanks. The breakage fees are killing me lately. So are my feet and my back. Oh. Sound like we ought to retire. Oh, dear. Now, see. You see those two men with that blonde sitting over at that table? Yeah. Got any idea who the fat man is? No, I've never seen him before. You think you could find out something about him without him knowing you're doing it? Well, maybe, but I'm no super sleuth, you know. Try. Just this once. With these tips, I'll be able to retire a whole hour earlier. <laughs> Mujer de la tierra 
del sol tropical Solo por ti su bello que es amor Por tu querer te daría mi vida mujer Por tu ilusión perdería el corazón Eres mi amor lo que ansío tener junto a mí Y si tú no me quieres Si no es con tu amor, moriré yo de amor. Eres mujer de la tierra del sol tropical, solo por ti supe yo. your straw hat character here at the Boom Boom Room. He got away when Chacha did her number. Come on, you've heard Chacha sing before? Well, never mind. Who was with him? Barney and Laurie Ames, Merlot's girlfriend. Anybody else? No. Barney showed up alone. That's funny. He was supposed to meet them. Well, look, I better call Hal's apartment. Okay, Dave. Thanks, Ken. a girl all evening. That's right. Name's Laurie Ames. You can check with her if you want. But I don't see why I gotta answer all these questions when you said yourself it was an accident. I said it looked like an accident. People have been known to slip and fall in a tub, hit their heads and drown. But that doesn't mean it couldn't be a cleverly executed murder. Murder? Are you trying to say I bumped off my own buddy? A guy I suffered with and thought... Calm down, the... Michaels. I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just asking you some routine questions. Well, then cut the routine. It's not getting laughs. Say, if you're looking for a guy with motive and everything, here's your boy right here. Oh? Hal just told me tonight that Harris here was taking out his sister. Hal didn't like the bum and told him to lay off. That's a lie. <laughs> Is there any reason for the lady to stay, Lieutenant? No, she can go. How about me? You can go, too. You better grill him, Lieutenant. Maybe he just didn't discover the body. I'll grill who I like. Now clear out of here. Harris, you stay. Okay, Dave, what's it all about? Hal Marlowe was the inside man. I'm pretty sure that now. Then you think it was murder? Well, he was in too deep. He tried to get out, so they must have killed him. Well, that's great. You think it was murder. The autopsy report proves it was an accident. So nothing to indicate foul play? Not a thing unless you've got something. So nothing concrete, but logically, that's what's happened. I can't go after Barney Michaels with logic, Dave. I've got to have evidence. Well, I'm not let it die here. Maybe I can put a little pressure on Michaels. Be careful. <laughs> It was a cinch, I tell you. No, it may be. But I don't like the police even faintly suspecting it might be anything more than an accident. 
It was just routine. The lieutenant told me so himself. Well, if routine means more investigation, we're running out of time. And besides, we've got to find ourselves a new inside man. What do you mean, busting in here? You, get up. She stays, but you go. Look, I want to talk to you, and if you know it's good for you, you'll listen. I can take a hint, honey. All right, what's your trouble? You left me to the lions back there. Just my civic duty. How'd you get out so fast? I had to talk my head off to convince the police it was an accident. But you and I know it wasn't, don't we? What are you talking about? I was here earlier than I told them. A whole half hour before Kathy arrived. I saw someone leave this apartment. But you couldn't have. The manager said you were the only one that came in. Oh, I'm talking about the terrace. He couldn't have seen you leave that way, but I did. You must have seen somebody else. I was with the little lady. Would you like to come down to police headquarters with me and prove that? What's your game, Harris? I could have talked, you know. But I didn't. Why? Well, because let's say, uh, I like your place here. I always wanted an apartment like this. What is this, blackmail? Oh, no, no. Let's just call it a mutual benefit arrangement, shall we? Well, well, wonders never cease. A crummy little bank teller with an itch for larceny. Why not? You've got money, I want money. I keep my mouth shut, you pay the price. I'll tell you what, let me think about it. Now, if your thinking includes getting rid of me, forget it. Because I'm not as accident prone as hell was. Okay. I think we can work something out. The way I see it, you don't have any choice. Good night, sir. You heard? All of it. I don't think we'll have to look very far for our next pigeon. What do you want for keeping quiet? Five hundred, a thousand? How about five thousand? Peanuts. You, maybe. To me, that's an awful lot of monkey. What would you say to a hundred and fifty, maybe two hundred thousand? That kind of money, I'd do anything. You really mean that? I said anything. Including knocking over the bank? Do you think it can be done? It'd be a snap with you on the inside. Well, I'm there every day, five days a week. What do I do? It's really quite simple. I said eyes front. Today is Monday. Friday is the first of the month. Payroll day for most of the people in the town. Now, sometime this week, the bank expects a big delivery of cash to handle all the business. We must know exactly when it is coming. That's easy enough. Then what? You will be told when it is time. A word of advice. Our friend Merlo got cold feet. Now all the rest of him's cold, too. Don't let it happen to you. Why well, come you didn't let me know sooner? I didn't know myself till he called a few minutes ago. Well, what time is the delivery going to be made? Just before closing time today. It's 10.30. We get better in four hours. It still isn't enough time. Well, I'll just have to lie to him, that's all. Tell him the delivery's being made tomorrow. Good. And we'll be ready for him. You're going to enjoy this, aren't you, Mr. Camden? Look, don't worry about me, Thorne. I can handle small arms just as well as the big stuff. That you can. You might find this hunt a little different. The game we're after have brains. We've also got guns. Yes, it is an inconvenience, Mr. Turnbull, coming all the way across town to do business here. If my father thinks that by making it harder to get to, I'll start spending less money. Break this for me, huh? 
find out anything yet? Tomorrow morning, immediately after the banquet. Oh, excuse me, won't you? Thank you, sir. What are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be in Las Vegas. I'm sorry, you're mistaking me for someone else, ma'am. My name is Harris. Cyril Harris. Oh, Mr. Harris. I guess I have mistaken you for someone else. It happens sometimes. You're absolutely right. There is a resemblance, though. It must be the glasses. Well, that was too close. What are you doing here in a bank? Look, I can't explain now, Daffy. As far as everyone is concerned, I'm still in Las Vegas. I should be home tomorrow sometime. You're in Las Vegas, and you'll probably be home tomorrow. That's right. No matter what happens, you haven't seen me, all right? All right, Dave. Bye. I mean, Mr. Harris. <laughs> Well, you can tell Lieutenant Snedeker I don't know how they plan to do it. They haven't even told me what my part is yet. But they better have the place staked out before we open tomorrow morning. Where can you meet you to coordinate things? Uh, you better call me at my hotel. We can make arrangements tonight. All right. Well, lunch hour's up. I better get going. I'll come with Snedeker. I need to miss fireworks tomorrow. Might need your help. checked on him. His real name is David Thorne, and he's a private investigator with Surfside 6. Mr. Thorne's a very clever young man. He fooled all of us. But what are we going to do now? He knows all about us. Now? We change our plans, of course. You mean to say you still want to go through with this? Harris, or, or rather Thorne, told you the delivery would be tomorrow? That's right. And your information, Laurie, uh, was different? I had drinks with a fellow last night who's a dispatcher for the armored car company. He said the big delivery was being made this afternoon. Then that's when we hit the bank. This afternoon? You must be joking. I never joke, Barney. I'm not going to give up on this caper now. Too much money's gone into it already. Too much planning and thinking. Now, as I was saying, when the trap will be set for tomorrow morning, it will be safe to go in today. Well, looky here. Even better than I thought. You'll be able to move in a very few minutes. This delivery is going to mean a few hours overtime. Oh, Brilla. I'm buying coffee for everybody. You mind going for it? And of all the nights for overtime and making me an errand boy yet. I'll get the coffee, Ted. Black for both of you? Thanks, Kathy. And, uh, a little? Well, I better call my chick and cancel cocktails. You, uh, you figured out how we're gonna do it, lad? I've got a couple of ideas I want to discuss with the police tonight. We'll, we'll notify them. I won't be able to sleep tonight. Just thinking about it. Mr. Huff, I know you have a special reason to want to see these men caught. A very special reason. I saw them kill my son. He was just standing there. Mr. Huff, we're going to try and take him without any gunplay. See, if there's one mistake, one of our own people could get hurt. I'm sure you understand it. Yes, I understand. I understand, lad. Thank you. No, honey, just make plenty of ice. Hello. That's for you, Harris. 
Thank you. Oh, Harris speaking. We know who you are, Mr. Thorne. Who is this? We have someone here that wants to say hello. <laughs> Cyril, I don't know why they're holding me. If you can just... Tire and gagger. Uh... Now, if you want to see Miss Merlo alive again, you'll do exactly as I say. All right, but don't harm her. After I've finished, hang up the phone. Speak to no one. Now, give us a few minutes, then go to the guard on the front door and tell him you must leave on an emergency. By that time, we'll be out front in a car. The guard will open the door. Your job is to see that that door stays open until we're out of the car and inside the bank. Now, if you attempt to warn anyone, or we're not seen leaving the bank exactly ten minutes after we've entered, Miss Merlo will die. Is that completely understood? Yes. Good. Hang up now. We're on our way. Now listen, you just let me go! You're not gonna get away with this! Keep her here. And I meant what I said about killing her. Mr. Huff. Everything's all right so far. What is it? They've got Kathy. Kathy? They're going to be here in a minute. We've got to let them in. Are you going to let Please them... Please just trust me. I'll explain it later. Here they come. Well, no one will get hurt if you follow instructions. from those alarm buttons. I know by the panic and you won't get hurt. Now face the wall. Move! They've got eight minutes, honey. Better start praying everything goes as planned. to go. Well, that's more like it. Congratulations, honey. Now we're both happy. nervous there for a minute, boys. We're going to go back after the girl, Laurie. No, let's get out of here. I'm sorry. The party's over. Let's go. Kathy? Thank you. Uh-huh. I was wondering, maybe... Hi, is everybody ready? All set. You got time for a drink? Nope. You gotta get going. I've made dinner reservations for 8.30. Oh, we're late already. Yeah, where are we dining, anyway? The Gascony Room. On Day's recommendation. Can you afford it? Hmm? Oh, no, no. Can, can, though. No. Why? Side six. What's that? Surfside six. <laughs> 